air and make the talbiyah from there. And of course, to many people, especially who came via air, it's almost impossible. So the only way is the penalty, which is to slaughter a sheep in Mecca to be distributed amongst the poor. There is a very important notes here I would like to mention, which is the difference between the penalty and the sacrifice. Al-Hajj is a sacrifice which a pilgrim would offer by the end of the conclusion of their Hajj. Uh, this Hajj is similar to al uthiyah that you may eat of it, give gifts to your friends and relatives, and distribute upon the poor as well. But in case of the penalty, it has to be slaughtered in Mecca, and it has to be distributed amongst the poor people of Mecca, and you're not allowed to best to taste a bite of it, because that's a penalty, and this is a ransom you're, you're giving or paying for a violation that you've committed. Uh, if a person happens to be visiting the city of the Prophet وسلم, before the performance of Hajj, before the actual Hajj going to Mecca and so on, in this case, they may keep their clothes on, and of course they go to al Medina with their regular uh, condition, everyday clothes, and there, while coming back from al Medina, they will be treated as the people who do well in al Medina. So they will assume the intention of al ihram from the appointed place of al Medina people, which is Dhul Hulayfa, or it is known nowadays as Abiyar Ali. Sheikh, I want to get back to this issue of jima'ah, or the, the sexual relations between the spouses during the time of ihram, because it carries such a serious penalty. What about when someone is combining the hajj, or separating the umrah and the hajj, uh, and exits ihram? Is, is this permissible at that time? You see, that's why Allah gave us uh, uh, an ease while performing hajj and umrah. And that's why it's recommended to choose hajj al tamattu where you perform the Umrah, and once you're done with your Umrah uh, rites, you shave or you trim your hair, then you're free. A person may embrace his wife and have all the marital relationship they want to have, as long as they're in a state of tahallul, they exited already from ihram. And that will continue until the eighth day of Dhul Hajjah, where they would assume a new intention for the performance of Hajj. Sheikh, uh, there are plenty of issues left to deal with concerning ihram, but we need to take a short break. So please stay with us, and we'll be back in just a minute, insha'Allah. As-salamu alaykum. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Hajj Step by Step. Before the break, we were talking about some of the restrictions of ihram. Now, concerning the major uh, acts of, of marital relations that can really invalidate the whole Hajj, does the same apply to just you know small intimacies between the spouses? Well, the word rafas. Uh, refers to the sexual uh, contact and its introductions. But the penalty differs by the meaning if there was a complete uh, sexual intercourse, uh, all what we mentioned applies here. So that the Hajj is void, they have to perform another Hajj, the penalty applies, uh, and they have to ask for forgiveness, etc. But in case that there was just some, you know, touching, hugging, kissing, etc., without having an actual intercourse, it's a sin. It's a big sin. But they may go on in their hajj. Their hajj will be valid, but they have to offer a penalty, which is slaughtering a sheep 
will be treated as any penalty we discussed before to be slaughtered in Mecca and to be distributed amongst the poor of Mecca and they cannot taste it. Well, what if somebody is saving the occasion of Hajj to perform another very happy occasion, which is marriage? Of course, when people get married, they want to have relations right away. Is, this, uh, is, is there any exception for this, or is there any specific rule about marriage during the time of Hajj? Actually, no wonder that uh, whenever we were taught that during Ihram, that a person may not get engaged or engage others, or get involved uh, in any marriage contract by any means, one would wonder who would think or care about that, but actually a lot of people save this happy occasion to be done during the performance of Hajj or Umrah. Yet, if a person is in a state of ihram, he may not engage, get engaged, or seek or be sought for, should not be involved in any activities of engagement, marriage, or marriage contract at all. And if this happened, the scholars say that this marriage contract which took place during the state of ihram is invalid. The Prophet ﷺ stated that لا ينكح المحرم ولا يخطب ولا ينكح A person who is in a state of ihram should not get married, even having the marriage contract or the engagement, or being sought for. Well, Shaykh, we now have a short video that we're going to show showing some of the other prohibitions during the state of Ihram. So if perhaps you could just explain some of them, and then when we're done, we'll go into a little more detail. Well, as we see that uh, uh, of the restrictions, cutting, shaving, or removing any hair of the body of the muhrim that, apply, that applies for a man or a woman. Clipping the nails, these are all restricted acts. Wearing fragrance by any mean, whether applied to the body or to the ihram clothes, and that applies to both. Hunting or targeting or scaring an animal during the state of ihram. Breaking a tree or removing a branch. And uh, the last two issues, hunting and breaking the trees in Mecca, and the third one, which is picking up lost items, are prohibited during all times. That's not only limited during the state of Ihram, but once you are in the boundaries of Mecca, the sacred city, you cannot scare, you cannot hunt an animal, uh, you're not allowed to break a tree or cut grass, or you're not allowed to pick up any lost items, except if you're picking them up, for clarification and to announce to the public that somebody lost their property. So if you're taking them to turn them to the authorities, that's valid, but you're not allowed to take the lost items and even give it in a charity. As we see that it's prohibited during ihram for the muhrim to cover his head. Uh, of course, that's for a man. Uh, covering the head by wearing a kufi, a cap, uh, or by the ihram clothes is prohibited. While uh, holding an umbrella or staying in a tent is permissible during the state of Ihram. As we see in this picture that if you are in a state of Ihram, you are not allowed to wear any stitched clothes. All your clothes have to be seamless. Uh, of course, that is the Ihram clothes, the Izar and Al-Ihram. As we see in the picture that somebody is wearing the shoes which are covering his ankles, that's too restricted during the state of Ihram. Rather, the muhrim would wear a pair of sandals that applies only to men. But as we discussed before, for women, they may wear whatever they wish of their uh, daily regular clothes. Well, what are some of the penalties for these acts if they do by any chance happen? For instance, if someone decides to, to go hunting or commits any other of these acts, do they have the same penalties or do the penalties vary? Well, not necessarily somebody would go hunting if somebody hit an animal, a deer by his car, etc. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in the Quran uh, stated very clearly, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la taqtulu al-sayda wa antum hurum. Surah Al-Ma'idah. Oh, you who believe, do not hunt or kill an animal while you are in the state of ihram. وَمَنْ قَتَلَهُ مِنْكُمْ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاءٌ مِثْلُ مَا قَتَلَ مِنَ النَّعَمِ يحكم به ذوا عدل منكم هديا بالغ الكعبة. And whoever does so hunt during the state of ihram, then would assign two just judges from amongst ourselves, who would evaluate the value of that animal which has been hit or hunted, and they would judge with a similar animal of domestic animals of equivalent value. That animal will be slaughtered and distributed in Mecca amongst the poor. 
uh, in case that a person has to wear regular